going to be taking calls all night long. 866-582-9933. If you're watching PrisonPlanet.tv right now, I want to remind you that we have one and two. That's one and two of the Alex Jones DVD arsenal, the best of, January and February. On top of that, they're in, folks. Yes, Aaron Russo, Reflections and Warnings. What a great companion piece to Freedom to Fascism, which has literally been seen by tens of millions of people and gone after by the federal government in their DHS MIAC report. Remember, it's high treason if you're giving out America freedom to fascism and now reflections and warnings. So go check that out over at Infowars.com. Yes, sir. By the way, there's a 27-minute expanded extra just for PrisonPlanet.tv. That's the Tucker extra, right? Well, it's, it's Tucker and it's people harassing Jacobson, mm -hmm. Secret Service people. Mm-hmm. Uh, because the national news is now saying there was no Secret Service, there was no Bilderberg. We were literally schizophrenics <laughs> just hallucinating this. And, and I've had Psychology Today call me, basically asking me if I'm insane. Mm -hmm. uh, what, they can't hear me? No. I've had Psychology Today calling me, <laughs> basically asking if I'm insane and, you know, about imaginary Secret Service people. Mm -hmm. So... You've got one part of the media admitting Bilderberg's real and that we cover it and Politico and CBS admitting we're doing it. And you've got other media like uh, Bloomberg and the New York Times and others saying we're still start raving mad. And you know what? Good. Just keep saying none of it's real because you're discrediting yourselves. But that is up there right now for PrisonPlanet.tv members. 27-minute expanded exclusive extras from the Obama deception. Very well put together by Rob Jacobson. And Aaron Dykes for Prison Planet dot TV members. Thank you, sir. And uh, you know, if you want to talk about secret societies and Politico for a moment, Politico is kind of coming out. There's this. Uh, see, I, I can't keep up on all these groups, but it doesn't shock me that this Sotomayor is part of this. I guess you're calling it the Woman's Bohemian Grove, the Belizean Grove. And I think it's worse that she's a member of La Raza, and I don't like these little secret society organizations that worship owls, the, whether it be Skull and Bones or, of course, Bohemian Grove, or even on you know other levels, the CFR and the Trilateral Commission that do a lot of the work in the open. Because it's all about world government. It's all about charging you a carbon tax. It's all about making your life a living hell, bringing you down to a second and third world status of living. And with these forced inoculations, are you going to cry when you get cancer five or ten years later? Are you going to cry when you actually do get sick from this wine flu and in some cases die? Are you going to say, oh, they were right, or are you just going to bite down and say, well, the government tried to save me? They knew this swine flu was going to be so bad. And by the way, that Earth 2100 that everybody's been calling in about, I am currently downloading the entire show. I'm going to dedicate at least an hour to it on Monday because... Apparently, it already has its own Wikipedia page, and I was reading about it. And when they do the chemtrails, it's the last-ditch effort to save us from global warming. And I believe they say it's sodium oxide that they're shooting into the air, and that only makes it worse. It makes the, uh, <laughs> what do they say? They make, it makes the ozone layer deteriorate. So that we only damn ourselves twice by shooting pollutants into the air. And then even more people get sick. And there's literally, I think the, the population goes from, uh, I think they said 8 billion to four billion, so it cut it in half, and it, it follows this woman's life documentary style from 2009 all the way up to 2100. This apocalyptic, futuristic look into the world where half of us have to die, and yeah, chemtrails are real, and everybody has to be quarantined, and the police state's a good thing. It's a good thing at the end. I live to see some incredible things, and right now, right now, your kids are getting ready to interact with. Artificial intelligence on another level while you're spied on via the Internet through your Microsoft Motion Facial Recognition Voice Recognition Camera, Project Natal, just being announced this week. Technology is just zooming by. And under this Obama administration, while he goes and he bows down to the, uh, the death camps, it will never happen again under my watch. It's happening all over the world. What do you think is happening in the Middle East? What do you think is happening on the Gaza Strip? There are people being killed all over the world and nothing's being done. Why? Because it's big business. It's population control. They like the soft kill too, just needle in the arm. And that's what this swine flu pandemic is about. It's about a soft kill for the people that they just can't outright shoot in the head and take away their rights because they might rise up because we're an armed populace. Because some of us still do know about the Constitution and Bill of Rights. Not many of us, but there are a handful. 
All right, let's take some calls. 866-582-9933. Jeff in California. Jeff, you're on the line. Yes, sir. Hey, Jason. Um, I had a comment, uh, and then I had um, one or two things I was hoping to get your take on. Okay. Um, the comments about 9-11, uh, just I'll never forget uh, that morning. Um, I went out and got in my car because I had to go to work, and I was listening to the coverage on the radio, and um, the first reports that something had hit the Pentagon were, cu- were just starting to come in, and uh, I clearly remember them saying that uh, eyewitnesses were reporting that it was a small plane, uh, like a small private plane that hit the Pentagon. Mm-hmm. And then just out of the blue, uh, like a minute later or so, they changed the story. And that, that had to be the moment when the official story came through on the wire that it was American Airlines uh, Flight 77. You know, I don't know about that because I have seen so much of the live footage. There were some people that were saying it was a giant plane off the bat, at least, you know, from the timestamps on the news footage that I had. There were others saying it was a small plane. I actually went and interviewed that famous guy that said, you know, it was an American Airlines jet. I saw the logo clear as day. And he wouldn't yeah. get on camera with us, but we had a barbecue with him. He was a local, uh, he was, number one, a, a top Republican in his area, but he was also a local newsman, I think, for the NBC affiliate <laughs> there in D.C. And all I can say is big time shady, sir. So what else you got for me? Well, yeah, there was that. And um, the other thing, I was, I, what was your opinion on, like, you know, a lot of what we see in the media is obviously WWE politics, as, as you call it. Mm-hmm. Um, but then you do read things like Daniel Estel in uh, True Story of the Bilderberg Group, where he talked about how they... They basically handpicked John Edwards in '04 to be the VP candidate on the losing ticket. So, do you think that represents any type of desire on their part to, you know, elect somebody, or was I mean that was that whole thing just a charade from from the get-go? Oh, totally or? charade. Listen, once once Kerry became the frontrunner, let's really look at what happened there. Howard Dean don't like him, but Howard Dean probably would have been a real candidate, maybe of wanted that power as president, okay? He was winning every single primary. He was the media darling. He was on the cover of the Rolling Stone. He was Obama before Obama existed. You know, he was like the rock and roll candidate. And then out of the blue, he says, yeah, after he loses one primary, the media blows it completely out of proportion. And now John Kerry's the front runner. You go to a John Kerry rally during a primary, there's 20 people there. There's 15 people there. There were hundreds and thousands of people in Dean. And they wanted Kerry because Kerry was willing to lay down. Kerry won the election in 2004 and laid down. They knew they had it rigged with Diebold machines. That's why they're both on the news laughing. Yeah, we're in Skull and Bones. (laughs) It's so secret we can't talk about it. (laughs) I know. I mean, give me a break. So, yes, that was totally staged. And, by the way, uh, Edwards was confronted by student scholars for 9-11 Truth about him going to the Bilderberg meeting. And he said he was talking about the environment, sir, because that's what the Bilderberg group does. They play golf and talk about the environment. I'm sure it was. And one last thing, if, if I could. Um, I know you, you're friends with uh, uh, Griffin, uh, mm-hmm. G.W. Griffin, G. Edward Griffin. And, um, you know, the, the thing about uh, that executive order that JFK issued, have, are you familiar with um, Griffin's opinion on that? Because he actually, he refers to that as the JFK myth. Oh, are you talking about the executive order where he said that we were going to get away from the Federal Reserve and go back to a hard yeah. policy? You know, yeah, I've heard Griffin's that. actually, he's calling well, that the JFK myth, and his well, take is a little different on that. So. Yeah, no, you know what, there are a few people with a, a little different take on that. I'm not as well-versed as I'd like to be in that subject, so I yeah. have to look into it. I know that there are some that claim that he was ready to go after the Federal Reserve and go back to a hard yeah. currency, and that's why they blew his brains out. But I think they blew his brains out for a number of reasons. He wasn't strong enough to go into Cuba, you know, militarily, oh, in yeah. the fashion they did. He didn't want to clamp down on the American people. So who knows, I'll have to look into it uh, Actually, looking okay. forward to uh, having G. Edward Griffin on the program sooner than later. I thank you for the call, Jeff. Well, maybe I'll call in when he's on. Thanks. So- sounds good. Yes. Mike in New Jersey. Mike, you're on the air. Yes, Mike. I'm ready to talk about the countdown. Oh, on, on look who it is. He can't ever give his real name because he just likes – like, i gotta, I got to wonder why this guy calls in. He knows he's not going to get a chance to talk on the program. It's 9.17 this, this time. It's like got to be almost 10.30 his time. Doesn't he have kids? Doesn't he have a life? No. I'll just blow it off and move on. All right, next next caller. Let's go to Tiffany in Texas. Tiffany, you're on the line. Hi. I was listening to your show last night, mm-hmm. and I heard you make a comment about the lax laws on pedophilia. On what? I kind of have a, the lax laws for pedophiles. Yeah. And I kind of have a problem with that because I don't know if you're aware of the National Sex Offender Registry. Well, no, all right, all right. But it's a different thing when they want to create sex offenders out of people who are 18 years old and have sex with their 16-year-old girlfriend or that type of scenario. 